you a tea or coffee and come and join us inside. I'm sure more people are going to join us as we go along. How about you guys come a little bit closer because we want to pass chocolates around and it's going to be really awkward to pass chocolates around so far away. So come a little bit closer. That will also be helpful for those speaking a bit later. There we go. So tonight, we're going to do a slightly different service, and um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having a time of worship, and we're going to have three speakers who speak for short little bits, so it's going to be intertwined. So we're going to have worship, and then someone speak, worship, someone speak, and kind of carry on like that. So we have Amy, Belle, and Nathan, who are all going to be speaking to us tonight, so that's looking forward to that. And we have John Murphy back leading us in worship, so that's great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the notices now now so that it doesn't kind of seem a little bit random and disjointed a bit later. So the first thing I'm going to do is pass chocolates around because why not? Um. Okay. So have a chocolate while you listen to some of the notices and then um, I'm going to go from there. So, the first thing I just want to tell you about is that next week Sunday, we do not have our normal 6.30 service. And the reason being is that we have carols by candlelight. So we have a service at 5 p.m. and at 7.30. So we'd love for you to join us for one of those, but there's no 6.30. So if you come at 6.30, it won't probably be finishing one of the services. So don't come then, okay? Um, and what we are also wanting to do is, at our carols by candlelight, we serve mince pies and meld wine. It's a great um, evening, but what we need is we need some mince pies in order to do that. So we'd love for you to bring a box of mince pies if you're able to. Just pop them in the kitchen. We see some piles stacking up so that we have enough mince pies for everyone. Okay. Then the next thing is we have a young adult meal on Tuesday night. We have our Christmas meal. So we're going to be looking forward to that. If you don't know any, don't know about it, please come chat to me. The idea is that you bring your favorite Christmas snack, wear your Christmas jumper. We're going to do Secret Santa and have a lot of fun. So that is 7.30 on Tuesday. And then a date for your diary seems quite far away, but it's not really, is the 9th of Jan. So that is a Tuesday evening, and we're going to be doing our vision night then. We haven't had a vision night in a while uh, because of COVID and things like that, but it's back. And it's always a great evening where everyone across the three services join together. We sit around tables, celebrate what God has done, what he is doing, and look to the future. So please do save the date for that. So that is the 9th of Jan. Okay, great. So as I said, slightly different service if you came a bit later. We're going to be having worship intertwined with three different speakers tonight. And it's just going to flow. So you're not going to hear much from me. That's why I didn't notice this now. Okay, so I'm going to pray. And then John is going to lead us in worship with the band. So Lord, I just thank you that we can come tonight. I thank you that we can come and worship you. Lord, as we have the busyness of the Christmas season, I just pray that we'll be able to focus on you now as we look at your story afresh, as we look at different characters. So bless our time of worship, we pray, as well as bless Nathan and Amy and Belle who are going to be speaking to us. In your name, amen. Let's worship.
should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He was there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified but the angel said to them do not be afraid I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thanks, Faith. Um, yeah, so as Tamlin said, um, we're going to be looking at characters from the Nativity, um, and I'm going to be looking at the angels, lovely angel up there. Um, as we know, many angels appear in the Christmas story. The, probably the most important one is Angel Gabriel, who appears to both Mary and Joseph. And then like in the passage that Faith, you just read, we have the shepherds who announce the good news of Jesus being born and then singing his praise. Angels in the Bible are known for many things. Ultimately, they are known to praise God, but also to bring good news, comfort, and to communicate messages from God. And communicating messages from God is probably the most important one in the story. Uh, when angel Gabriel appears to Mary, he tells her the most important news that he's going to bear, uh, the son of God, Jesus. Um, and then for Joseph, when Joseph's going through a tough time um, in a very controversial situation where he's thinking of divorcing Mary, an angel appears and communicates an important message from God to stay with Mary. And just like the shepherds, another important message was, of course, Jesus' birth. Um, yeah, in, whenever an angel delivers a message, they say, do not be afraid. And some of the messages they deliver are very scary. You can imagine teenage Mary hearing that uh, 
um, that she's going to carry Jesus is a scary message, and it's not always comforting, but they always come and say no fear, because they know that with God's love that they are not going to fear. Now, I don't know what you think when you think of angels, perhaps a halo or high-pitched singing or wearing total white, but I'm here to say that you don't need to be an angel glittering and glowing um, to give the good news of God, the comfort, and to communicate God's message. And it reminds me of a time when I was a bit younger, so I was in year seven, and I had been going to a summer camp um, in Minehead called Upcott for many, very many years, and that week our theme was how to be like Jesus, and we'd been through lots of different ways, what to say, how to pray, how to act. But the one thing that stood out to me was how to be so much like Jesus that people can see you and see Jesus. And I held on to this and I asked the leaders and they were like, you've got Holy Spirit in you and it's going to flow out around you and people can see it and people can feel peace. Just like when you see an angel, you can see the Holy Spirit, the light around them. And I carried this to school and I was sat in a math lesson and I was like, okay, God, like, I want people to see you through me. I want to like glow like an angel. And yeah, and this boy next to me in maths, he was called Luca. And I remember he turned to me and he was like, what's happened to you? And that's never good coming from a year eight boy's mouth. <laughs> but he was quickly followed with, you look very bright. Something's different. And I was like, yes, God, like this has worked. <laughs> But um, the, the reason I say that is because brightness is a, like, a likeness to angels. And in that moment, it was almost that I was like on earth angel and that this boy could see like Jesus's light that I had asked through me. And I guess my challenge is to you is can we all radiate like the light of God in our own lives and yeah, take it back to school or in our workplace? Um, can we rejoice, like the angels said, about glory to God in the highest? And I'd caveat that by saying at this time of year, at Christmas time, it's easier to radiate the light. We're reminded of the story. We're reminded of the good news around us when we're seeing friends and family. And I'd, yeah, my challenge would be that when you go back to school, just like I did, can you be like the angels and give the good news and the comfort and the praise that they do to those people around you, even when the joy of Christmas is over. Yeah. Um, so as a, a kind of response at the end, um, we're going to light some candles and they could also be a symbol for the light that hopefully you can radiate like the angels and the... <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're just going to worship again, but yeah. <laughs> from the realms of glory wing your light all over the earth ye who sang creation story now proclaim Messiah's birth come and worship Christ the newborn Yeah. 
Nathan. Um, I've got to admit, I'm not the most Christmassy person. Um, and I know, Tamla, don't worry, that might be a controversial thing to say on like a Christmas-themed evening, but I thought I'd get it out of the way first of all. Um, now, that, that's not to say I don't like Christmas. I do love Christmas. Um, but it takes me a while to warm up, um, get into the Christmassy spirit. Um, but luckily, this summer, I made a very strategic move, and I married the most Christmassy person I've ever met. So... Those of you concerned about our future children's Christmas experience, don't worry. Between us, great balance. In fact, when we were up um, visiting her parents, uh, I'm married to Esme, by the way, for those of you who don't know. Um, uh, we were visiting her parents a couple of weeks ago, and um, I'd known that they were a very Christmassy family, and like Christmas Day, like they were up at 6.30 a.m., like presents being ripped open, chaos. What I found out the other weekend that I didn't actually know before is the person waking up at 6.30am was Esme. I, I presumed being the eldest of five siblings, like the younger ones were the ones getting super excited. But no, it turns out I now live with the person who gets up at 6.30am on Christmas. Um, so our first Christmas together, please do be praying for us. It's going to be interesting. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the shepherds. Um, and the reason I'm talking about the shepherds is that I, I feel they represent two of the most important parts of the nativity for me. Because um, even though I don't get super Christmassy, um, I still love the, the story that comes with Christmas time of Jesus' birth. Um, first of all, the, the thing that strikes me about um, the shepherds, um, and I think this, this comes up a lot, but it really gets me every time, is that... Um, they were the first to hear the good news. They were the first to hear the story. And this sort of sets up a pattern in the Bible of the lowest or the, the ones you least expect coming first. And I, I really enjoy getting reminded that every year. Um, it's, it's, it's something that's so important, I think, for us as Christians and um, as part of our faith that we serve the lowest first or those who we wouldn't expect um, in the same way that Jesus did. And um, in this nativity, that is just a reminder of it. The people you least expect who are out in the fields, um, far away from everyone else, just guarding the sheep, minding their own business, are the ones who hear of Jesus' birth first, like the most important person to ever have existed, is born and they're the first to know. And I think that's an awesome, awesome reminder. The second thing I love about the shepherds um, is uh, their attitude to evangelism and how they react to hearing the story. Um, now, you probably are aware they were the sort of history's first evangelists. That's someone who tells people about Jesus. Um, so in verse 17 and 18, it says... When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told uh, them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. So I, I checked the other Gospels, and as far as I'm aware, no one instructed the shepherds to tell everyone, I don't think. Um, I might actually be wrong on that. Um, but 
it says here, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what um, had been told them about the child. As in, their reaction was almost automatic. They didn't even hesitate or think about it. It was just the story is just that good that they wanted to tell everyone. Um, and I think there's something in that because the, the best, one of the best things about Christmas time is the fact that we get to tell a story. And it's not like a, it's not fiction. Like it's, it's a true story. And that, that sort of, uh, that re reminder to myself every Christmas that this is not just a made up like kids story that we tell for entertainment. Like this is actually what happened. And we have historic records of this is the story. And I think that's just incredible. And I didn't actually know exactly what Bell was going to say, um, but my, my sort of takeaway is very similar, I think. Um, and that most people already know most of the story. Like, most of the work has been done for you by media and films, like what Christmas is about. But m almost everyone is missing out on the key part that you may know or maybe you don't know yet, and tonight's night you're going to find out. But what Jesus really represents to us and to the world, the real meaning of Christmas. And so I'd like to think about that um, this Christmas. And um, when you hear the story, mem remember that it's not just made up, it is real and it impacts all of us. And maybe go out and tell someone.
been made more Earth stood hard as iron Water like a stone Snow had fallen Snow on snow Snow on snow Long ago Our God Him cannot hold it Nor it sustain Heaven and earth shall flee away When He comes In the bleak midwinter, a stable place sufficed. The Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Hello everybody, um, my name's Amy, um, and some background for you about myself is that I haven't always been a Christian, I didn't grow up in a Christian household, um, and I came to know Jesus as an adult. Um, but when I first became a Christian, I was so worried about understanding things wrong, and misunderstanding God and scripture. I often felt that I had to have complete theological knowledge uh, before I could make a comment on any part of scripture. Uh, and if I studied it really, really well, uh, in lots of detail, then any doubts or niggling questions around faith and God uh, would just go away. I made myself believe that when it came to talking to others about Jesus, God and his plans, I had to be ready to answer every question and have every answer. And this was made worse in times when I often felt like I couldn't hear God clearly. Uh, this made prayer feel really hard my doubts grew, and I felt like I was distancing myself from God in frustration. But there are three problems with this way of thinking is, I'll never know every answer to every God-related question. I had to learn that God had trust that God had already spoken through scripture, and it's not really what God wants from us. He wants our trust and our faith in him, and he wants us to tell others about Jesus from wherever we are in our journey. And what a better place to start than with his birth. Maybe you can relate to this. Has there ever been times where you've had questions about God or faith that felt too big? Or times when you didn't fully understand why God has or has not done something? Maybe you have a reoccurring prayer that feels unanswered. It can be easy to get discouraged and confused in these times. And I want to focus on Mary from Luke chapter two to explore how that the most important part is not in having complete knowledge 
or having all the answers from God, but in treasuring the nature of God, the promises God has already made to us all, and having a quiet and strong faith like Mary. The amazing thing about Mary is that she was actually, in fact, very ordinary. She was an ordinary teenage girl who could have easily been overlooked by others in society. She had no great influence, no worldly status. She was like any ordinary woman with a resilient, a resilient strength of character. In Luke 2, we see twice that Mary treasures and ponders things in her heart. After the shepherds come to visit Jesus, and later when Jesus is 12, and he stays behind in the temple to talk to religious leaders, and after the shepherds come to visit Jesus and Mary, they were so amazed, they'd excited to tell everybody about what they had seen and share the good news. But Mary reacted differently. Instead, Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The news was not a surprise to Mary, since she had been told by the angel Gabriel nine months before that she was going to give birth to a special son, the Son of God. But in this moment, instead of being uh, outwardly reactive, she was reflective, trying to fully understand what was happening around her and how God's will was playing out. In the nine months of her pregnancy, she must have spent countless hours thinking about what was really happening and what it all really meant. The shepherd's arrival and their joyful reactions would have confirmed what Mary had previously known about the significance of her son. She had given birth to the long-awaited Messiah, the bringer of peace, which the Jewish people had been talking about for generations. It's quite a lot of pressure for a first-time mum. It is as if at every stage of her journey, Mary is observing what has happened and is storing onto and holding onto those memories. As each new significant thing happens to her, she is meditating on it and pondering its meaning. The fact that Mary pondered in her heart suggests that Mary didn't fully understand everything she was experiencing and learning about her son. She knew that Jesus had a divine calling, but how could she know exactly what this would entail? And I'm sure Joseph felt the same when he learned of Mary's pregnancy. Even though Mary may not have known every part of God's plan, she reflected on what had happened and what God had revealed to her. Her faith was quiet and strong, guarding the secrets of God and awaiting their fulfillment. What Mary had experienced was beyond her natural comprehension, a virgin birth, pregnancy, and now raising the son of God. Yet she, per uh, she preserved the experiences and trusted God in the process. As we experience life and grow up, we learn more parts of God's will and his plan for us. We can kind of imagine them like puzzle pieces fitting together, although we may never see the full completed picture in our lifetime. Like Mary, we ponder the experiences, the memories and the pieces that God has given us, both individually and collectively, and they build up our faith. A big corner piece of that puzzle being the birth of our saviour, Jesus. We can ponder on who Jesus is and God's redeeming plan, even when we haven't filled in every gap or answered every question in our own lives and calling. We can ponder on and treasure what God has revealed to us already. When things in life feel hard and doubts creep in, we can hold on to those treasured memories which build up our strong, quiet faith which can see us through tough times, anxious times, and seasons of waiting, just like Mary. However, you do not have to ponder and stand still in the memories of the past. Mary continued to ponder as Jesus grew up and as she got older. I'm sure she continued to ponder and treasured memories in her heart when Jesus performed his first miracle at the wedding of Cana, and when Jesus was on the cross, and when the tomb was found empty. The important thing is to meditate and move forward faithfully with God. You cannot wait for every answer. You cannot dwell on the last answer you've received, but you can trust in what God has revealed. And he has revealed himself in Jesus, the incarnation, which we remember at Christmas.
me. Why don't we stand? It's been really helpful to just think of the different characters tonight and the different aspects of the story. We're going to worship now, but as we do, I'd love for us to use this time as a time of ministry, just in the busyness of Advent and Christmas and the next two weeks, to just pause. And I'm going to invite you to come and light a candle if you'd like to. And as you do that, maybe you're going to light it thinking about the angels, asking the Holy Spirit to come and shine through you. Maybe you'll be like the shepherds asking the Holy Spirit for courage to share the real meaning, to be an evangelist, just like those first shepherds were. Or maybe you're going to light it and just take a moment to ponder. Ponder, what is God doing in your life? What is his plan? Bring your questions to him. Just as Amy says, there's a whole puzzle piece and he's got the big picture. So I'm going to invite you to come forward as John's going to lead us in ministry and worship. And if you'd like pray, I encourage you just to come to the side and one of us would love to pray for you. But just come forward when you're ready as we worship together now. Sweet. 
Lord, sometimes it feels like we're really on trembling ground. But we thank you that you are the rock. You are the one who brings us that security, that comfort. And Lord, I just pray that as we go into this Advent season, that we'll just really ponder in our hearts about the Christmas story. Think about the characters. Lord, that it isn't just another story, but that it is the foundation of our faith. Lord, I just pray that you bless and keep each and every one of us here. Amen. Right, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's so lovely to see you all. If you have come prepared to give, there's contactless giving at the back as well as a basket. And um, there's also going to be canopies and some drinks afterwards. So please do join us. It would be lovely to catch up. And remember, next week, no 6.30. It's a carol service, 5 p.m. and 7.30. We hope to see you there. Thanks. <laughs>